She was going for a bloody detonator. Good job we dropped her then. We made the right call, sir. After all the wait, the alphas, the betas, the press events, we now have in our hands final code for Call of Duty Modern Warfare on PS4 and PS4 Pro. It's rebooted from the ground up in every way by developer Infinity Ward. Every aspect of its engine is redesigned, the physically based lighting, volumetric fog, shading, the world streaming, and even a form of intelligent geometry culling all support a game with a broadened scope. So we've seen all of this work in harmony for the multiplayer beta already, but now at last we see the technology being pushed in another way in the final game, the campaign mode. The campaign mode is in truth a more directed experience, more linear certainly early on, but by funneling the action down a set path it showcases what the IW engine can do. So to join me to discuss how it all looks and perform on the PlayStation consoles, I'm joined by none other than Alex Battaglia. Hey there, Tom. Do you know this is the first video we've been in together just by each other and not with another guest? That is true. <laughs> yeah. Actually, we did this exact game, didn't we? Uh, Call of Duty. Yeah. Uh, we did a DF Direct with Rich and John and yeah. Will actually appeared in it. So yeah, this is a, a first for both of us. Yeah, and I'm really excited to talk about the PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 4 Pro versions of this game. Even though I'm playing primarily on PC, of course. Of course, you're our PC guru and you've got, obviously got your your own video dedicated to that uh, but I thought I'd invite you to this one because you've got a kind of top-down view of how this game runs and works mm -hmm. by virtue of just looking at the PC settings yeah, exactly. and so I've had my eyes firmly on the PS4 and Pro versions just dipped into the first say two hours of the campaign so no spoilers here it's obviously a very different beast to the multiplayer mode. So yeah, really we're just here to have a, a look at what's going on between these two as we got code on them first. And Xbox One and X are coming later. Uh, I think Rich is handling that one. So I really wanted to ask, what did you think of it? The campaign mode, we've heard an awful lot about it. It's something that's been kept out of sight for a long time, but now we've seen every level, the recreation of Piccadilly with those lifelike materials to the night vision goggle segments with the Camden house, kind of like Rainbow Six Siege. There's a lot to look at in every level. I mean, I guess the first highlight I would mention is the actual variety that you discussed. I mean, without spoiling, it takes place over a wide variety of locales and the material quality in each of these locales, you know, depending upon where they are, being it dirt, mud, forest, road, all the way to clean, modern interiors with like wood, all of the materials hold up really, really well. So their new art pipeline, which is, you know, scanning in a lot of things, really holds up and all the materials across the entire game just look frankly photorealistic at some points uh, when you look down at them. And I guess the next thing that really caught my eye, uh, since it is a first person shooter, was just in general how awesome the gun models look in this game and the way they animate. Um, I noticed one of the really cool things is that depending upon how many magazines you have left, the animation will change and things like that. Uh, so it, it's really kind of done in this tactical, cool way where everything feels really mechanical and precise with the animations. And it just is my, in terms of, for me at least, uh, the best Call of Duty shooting I've ever played, you know, and that's a pretty high praise. It's worth saying we've got actual debug footage from Infinity Ward itself, thanks to uh, Michal Drobot. They sent us over behind the scenes footage to show how the buff is broken down on the right top there. Something we've really been looking forward to showing actually, because you know, there's stuff like the tile streaming system where you can see how the engine will prioritize different parts of the map as you move slowly or quickly and where it starts to render everything in and where something is partially rendered. Something that honestly I haven't seen much of in the uh, campaign, but it certainly comes out in the multiplayer side. One thing that I did notice with the campaign was the kind of lack of loading screens or hidden loading screens that because they have the normal in-game cinematics that start a mission usually. Uh, but in between the missions themselves, there's this kind of, I believe the studio Blur, who's made a lot of pre-rendered cinematics in the past, uh, have made these where extremely high quality models and high quality the animations locked at 30 fps to hide loading screens and then it switches over to the in-game graphics what is your message from captain price 
my big highlights were probably the Piccadilly stage, which is the second one. It gives you an amazing showcase of an area we know, and by doing that, we can compare and contrast it and see just how close it gets. You know, the materials in this are incredible. We're getting screen space reflections on console here, which looks good enough. Yeah, they're pretty good looking in the new engine. I think that's something that uh, is slightly different from other Call of Duty games in the past, which had much more limited screen space reflections. But here, they're pretty much all over the place. There's one thing that I really noticed is that they used a lot of spotlights in the game. So even as you go indoors, there's a lot of artificial lighting kind of setting the mood. And uh, you can really see that really well in that clean house level in Camden that feels very much the Rainbow Six Siege-like as you're going through it. It's very scripted, obviously, but you're kind of like opening doors and peering either with your night vision goggles or with them off. And they have this really moody lighting setup from all these extremely starkly lit areas with like really deep shadows. And it's just a generally really great looking stage. I think in terms of visual quality, that's like the best looking stage because it's all these really micro details in a very small room and they can pump up like the geometry level. And that really ties back into kind of the way the engine is now built regarding how much more geometry can be on screen, which you can see really, really well in these more micro levels. One thing I noticed outside the Camden house is the volumetric lighting as well. Oh yeah, yeah. The spotlights. And if you slow down, you can pan across and just see how much of an impact that has. I yeah. mean, volumetric lighting is so good in this game. I think it's taken on that more modern approach to volumetric lighting where there's a fog volumes in the game world and they're kind of locally placed based upon height. So if you're looking through a fog volume, for example, like you could see in this debug footage, it's really dense looking. But that's just in a valid area. From above, you can actually see through that fog in a much more clear way. So it's kind of this local fog volumes that are placed, and any light can interact with them. And that's what you're really seeing in a stage like Camden when you're outside. All that fog being lit by all these local lights. And it looks actually really, really great. And one thing I noticed on PC that most definitely has an effect on consoles is that the resolution of these volumetric lightings or at least the shadows going through them is directly tied to resolution your output resolution so on the console side that would mean something like a ps4 or a ps4 pro depending upon the resolution one will actually also with that have higher resolution volumetric lighting so you'll see differences in volumetric lighting depending upon what platform you're on easily the best looking Call of Duty I've played to date, but it really do get the sense that it's an engine that's designed to scale all these technologies, the, the fog, the night vision goggle stuff, the way geometry culls based on your perception of the scene as well is very dynamic. Which means if we go to a comparison between the two, actually there's not a heck of a lot between them in terms of the core visuals. I think for parity's sake they had to keep a lot of it consistent, but with that being said, there's there's definitely parts of the image which are dialed down. It basically breaks down to three areas. There's uh, low grade alpha effects on base PS4 if you're comparing them side by side. Motion blur has more dithering as well when you're panning across. It does feel like you know there's a lot more uh, speckled like dithering or at least it's at a lower res. And then there's that screen space shadow effect which also seems to be more dithered on base PS4. The resolution side is uh, kind of worth touching on as well. So in the beta, we had a dynamic resolution with temporal reconstruction to 4K on PS4 Pro. And the way that worked is it adjusted the horizontal resolution to about 50%, so it was 920 by 2160 at worst, and then it ran all the way up to 3840 by 2160, I, I suppose, in the ideal case, with numbers in between. But here, I've seen a lot of levels which run at around 2560 by 1440 lowest. It does seem very different and there are higher numbers as well. So there is a range, but 1440p seems to be a number. So it affects both axes in the campaign, unlike what we saw in the multiplayer beta. And on PS4 works in the same way as the multiplayer beta, actually. It's a 1080p as the max target, but the horizontal adjusts down to 960 by 1080. So 50% there. So it does seem much closer to the beta in the way that works. And you mentioned, uh, I believe, previously when covering this game that it uses a very special form of kind of uh, dynamic resolution scaling where one frame will be a lower resolution than its target and then the next frame thereafter will be the highest or a slightly higher resolution above that and the 
perceptual effect of them being blended together is that it looks like this medium resolution and it kind of it throws off our pixel counting quite easily right yeah it's a nightmare yeah. actually really truly <laughs> a nightmare <laughs> uh, so shall we talk performance um yeah definitely i think this is the bit we've got to address with uh, people uh, hoping to buy the game and wanting to enjoy the campaign at least because i tried the base ps4 first and you've got footage of this i've sent this over your way yeah yeah, yeah. it's definitely struggling to hold 60 fps yeah it for here, single player, it seems like it's dropping frames rather constantly and is not hitting its 60 FPS target, really in spite of the fact that it is, you know, using dynamic resolution scaling and it's doing all these things basically at runtime to make it sure it runs better on the GPU, but it's still dropping frames, which makes me wonder where the bottleneck is. So like, what is it like playing it subjectively for you and what kind of frame rate numbers are you seeing really? It felt like it was really solid in the first three levels or so. The opening one in the woods leading to the encampment and uh, what was it, the second is in Piccadilly, that's fine. Just mostly, you know, one-off frame drops, that sort of thing where you can accept it. Where things do kick off a bit is the proxy war level, level four. Yeah. You charge into that base, all guns blazing, and that's where, okay, there are sustained drops at 50 FPS here. And the bit that really stuck out to me was the when you get inside the warehouse right at the end, and you, yeah. you come back out and you're looking at over the entire encampment, and suddenly it's just a practically locked 40 FPS. So from that, I just realized, okay, base PS4 wasn't really a priority here. You know, we'll see how the base Xbox One goes. Uh, presumably... Necessarily that much better. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Rich is going to take a look at that one. But this bit inside the warehouse is the stress point for sure. The rest of the levels yeah. seem to go about 50 to 60 FPS though from that point. But it was really the first sign that I had to change the console to get a better performance level. And so I did. I moved over to the PS4 Pro and it's really good news there. You were mentioning, and from the footage that you sent to me, it's mainly 60 FPS. And those horror scenarios that you saw on the PS4 are much, much better on PS4 Pro, right? Yeah, infinitely better. The whole opening three levels, just fine. One, a couple of one-off dips. But it's when we get to that warehouse bit again, where, where we saw uh, PS4 hit 40 FPS. This just plows through at 60. With only one or two hitches, it's really so much better. Yeah, the takeaway really is that PS4 performs quite badly as far as the campaign goes. But with all the rendering tech that we've talked about, it's definitely pushing a Call of Duty with better visuals than anything before it. And it seems to be trying its best to keep up to the level of the other consoles. I suppose for the sake of parity and you know when it comes to multiplayer as well i mean it's not something that we should necessarily be very happy with but late generation games that push the graphical envelope definitely tend to run a lot worse you know even those that were targeting 60 fps it's interesting that ps4 pro is running so so well i guess that must have been for a lot of things based upon the marketing that we've seen the target platform on consoles honestly the bottom line is if you do want to enjoy the campaign as best it can pros your best bet but we do need to see the multiplayer i think that's where people will spend most of their time and pro isn't flawless either we did see yeah. it go down to the mid 50s during a kind of helicopter strike i'm curious though you know not to get ahead of the game here to your analysis and reveal too much but is there like one bit which is really an amazing stress test it's probably any of the areas in the game like the there's a helicopter strike that you mentioned where there's a lot of fire effects really close to the camera and they take up most of the screen. That's when I've noticed that the game in general runs worse when there's a lot of transparency effects. It seems very bandwidth and resolution taxed in this game. And that's where I've noticed it kind of on any of those areas where there's large explosions. But for the most of the gameplay, like you were talking about earlier, Piccadilly and things like that, where there's not a lot of explosions going on and you're just shooting in general, that, that's when the game runs a lot better actually. Well, the cool thing is I can play you online with the crossplay, which worked yeah. a treat. Yeah, we'll to hit that up again. That was great. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, actually, I'll throw in a bit of footage of how that worked now. Um, <laughs> everything was synced so well for a comparison. And the sad thing is yeah. we went through all those, uh, jumped through all the hoops to get it working, then realized, actually, there's not a heck of a lot of difference between all of them. <laughs> it was... Uh, yeah, that's something we'll see in my video as well. Beyond the, the ray tracing that I'll talk about yep. in depth in my video, this is going to be a very good looking game uh, with minor differences, basically across all platforms regarding resolution, as I imagine. Yeah, yeah. ray tracing, really the big focus i'm so excited to see that 
But mm -hmm. uh, yes, all eyes on the PC version, which Alex will be covering, and the Xbox One and X versions, of course, and multiplayer, where we'll uh, assess performance later on too. But that about ties up everything we've got with regards to PS4 and Pro with the campaign. Our first proper look at the final game, and I think it's fair to say it's a stunner, technically. Just make sure you've got the hardware to handle it, ideally a uh, pro or it's sounding like a PC. Thanks so much for joining me, Alex. Oh, of course, Tom, and I enjoyed our first full-on video together. It was fun. Yes, so let's do the outro thing. If you did like this video and want to see more, please feel free to like or subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell to get notifications as any new video lands. To get a pristine, high-quality version of this video, just check out our Patreon at digitalfoundry.net and to get in touch with me, Alex, or the team, just use Twitter. But from the both of us, thanks for watching. Clear. Let's head down. Get to Hadir.